Could you imagine adding a beautiful pondless stream and waterfall to your landscape? Today I'm going to take you on a virtual tour of some beautiful pondless streams and waterfalls. I've been contemplating all my time My thoughts make me tired just running through my mind Wonder if there's peace that I can find Instead of always be Hey everybody, it's Jack from Atlantis Water Gardens. Today we're going to go on a virtual tour of medium-sized pondless streams and waterfalls that can fit into most any backyard. Let's get started. What a great size for most backyards. This pondless waterfall is 14 feet in length and it's 3 feet of elevation from the reservoir up to where the waterfall starts. We've got nice, low, big rocks inside here that lend a lot of visibility to the actual waterfall and stream system. We're not really blocking anything, but you can still walk all over it because they're substantial enough that they're not going to move around. Below me, we've got a 500 gallon water reservoir tank. So we built this out of aqua blocks. We've got a pump vault over here. We're able to store 500 gallons of water below ground that feeds this. So it keeps it sustainable. You actually feed the leaders in from the house. So when you get a rain event, it can charge the basin. You're getting free water. We've got a 5,000 gallon hour pump that runs this. So we're getting a really nice amount of flow coming down this stream and waterfall. We've got some three inch deep areas inside this stream. You can see all that beautiful different colored gravel inside here. We're back here to visit this pondless about four or five months after it was installed and you can kind of get this, a feel for what it looks like once the plants start to grow in, which for me is an important part of what the finished product really, really is with one of these pondless streams. You've got to understand every season it's going to get better and better looking. This started off as just an eight inch pot with a creeping jenny plant, which is what this is in here. And after a few months, look at how much it's grown inside this area. There is a boulder below this, which is completely enveloped. I love this look because you got the greenery and the foliage coming right down on top of the water. That is a great soft edge which gives us a transition from our aquatic stream up into the terrestrial landscape. Now with this pondless, this is a, a flat backyard which is going to be a scenario for a lot of the water features that we install in suburban areas. We had to build up with some boulder work back here to actually make a berm and retain this. It's important that you bring your berm out wide enough so it lends to get some realism to the water feature. If we ended up just making it wide enough for the body of water on top, you get that volcano effect, which nobody really wants. You want it to look like this was born here. And we achieved that by getting a berm in large enough to start creating our waterfall and then supporting it with rock work or a retaining wall. Up at the top, this is where everything starts. This is where the party starts for this waterfall. And it's important to me that we don't see any components and I don't want to see any pipes just shooting water out to start this. That would take away from the entire effect of what's below it. So what we did here was we installed a spillway that is down below the gravel. So it's going inside here, it's welling up through the gravel, and then it's got five inches of water on top of it. So you get that spring effect, which then starts our waterfalls, creating a really naturalistic looking scene. Using these flat rocks and angles to be able to pass water over, creating eddies and turbulence gives it such interest, something you would see hiking through a wooded area, maybe by your home. And then splitting out around this rock, you can see this creeping jenny is starting to get growing here. Over time, it'll probably get wrapped right around this rock, giving it a cool waterfall effect right outside the plant life. I'm a big fan of beaching out areas, especially when you've got a waterfall in front. It just increases the visibility. So if you're sitting back several feet, you've got no obstruction. You're looking right into where the waterfall is and what a great view that is. What's going to happen over time, the plants that are actually inside this beach will start to consume this area and you'll get a similar effect to what you have over there with the Creeping Jenny, which is just vegetation right down to the water. Again, that forget-me-not started off as an eight inch plant. A Couple months later, look at it. It's just starting to take over and it will continue to do that up into the edge here. So this gravel will mostly disappear. You'll just see beautiful plant life, flowers going out into the water surface, creating just a really serene environment. For most suburban backyards that are typical to like Northern New Jersey, this is a fantastic option. It will fit just about anywhere. You're not talking about an enormous footprint and you're not giving up your whole yard just to a water feature but you're getting something that looks very, very natural and just adds to the whole ambience of your backyard.
This is another great example of a pondless stream. This is about 20 to 25 feet long. From bottom to top, you're just about three plus feet of elevation change. But look how naturalistic this is. By the time the plants grow in, you've got water babbling down through all these cobbles, creating pooling areas. You've got an approach rock there with this big stone you could stand on and appreciate this. I actually did not build this stream. This was built by a very good friend of mine, Chris Baker from Across the Pond Aquascapes, who lost his battle to cancer a few years back. This guy was extremely talented and I'm just glad I can really showcase and appreciate this stream. I love what Chris did here with the way he did his edge treatment. Boulders just kind of stepping down, layering into this deep pool area. He's got about eight inches of water in here, which looks like a small pond standing up against here. This horsetail rush is growing up from beneath the water into the landscape. I would really stumble upon this on a hike someplace. He did such a great job of recreating nature in this backyard. How could you not appreciate this? As it makes its way down, it's falling off a nice rounded boulder, giving it a completely different look as it continues to course through the landscape before it hits the reservoir. This also has a 500 gallon reservoir on it, which is set up for sustainability. The leaders off of the house are feeding into that reservoir. Every time it rains, it gets charged up with water and they're not really impacting the city water usage. Another great example of a stream of waterfall that would fit into most suburban backyards. You're not talking about a huge footprint. Even with something this size, you're maybe 15 or 16 feet of depth. From end to end, you might be 30 feet long. So to create all this landscape with a water feature flowing through it in a 16 by 30 area, I think that's, that's a pretty good job. I haven't been back to this house since we built this waterfall, which is over a year ago. I'm super excited to see how this looks after a year of growing in. Oh man, I mean, just walking up to it, you're at the gate, that hits you in the face. That is just gorgeous. I love this backyard. It's very naturalistic. It backs up to a watershed. There is a moss garden up top, and this waterfall really makes a statement when you walk in the gate. The idea here for the waterfall was born because Mark and his wife were putting an addition on the house. They've got this beautiful sunroom with the deck above it. They wanted to have a living, breathing piece of art to be able to look out of and actually open the windows and hear the sound of water permeate through the house. This one fits the bill. This was a difficult project because the only access was that gate. And if you can see here, we've got some big boulders in here, some that are over a thousand pounds. In order to make that happen, we had to bring in our spider crane to actually lift these rocks up from the driveway and set them inside here. Technical project, but it was worth the effort. And by doing that, we got a fantastic result with all these different waterfalls working their way down through the cracks in the rock work, the different shapes and textures, making their way back to the reservoir. We even were able to tuck a secondary waterfall off to the right side that just looks fantastic with that piece of driftwood. We're working the driftwood in as part of the waterfall where it drops in, curves around the leg of that wood and then off the face of that rock. What a great effect that is. And then of course we're hitting this stream, feeding back into where our system is. Moss just takes off in this garden. I'm a huge fan of moss. Moss will give a water feature instant age and you can see what it's done here. Just growing in between the rocks here, it makes it start to look like one rock formation. That's when you start to get that touch where things could be more believable, like it was always here. They did a great job planting this with their landscape plants, and as time goes on, you're gonna see more of this stuff help the rock work disappear, which is really what you want. As this starts to grow down, it's gonna cascade through here. Now we're just gonna have like maybe part of the rock exposed, giving it that great transition from our aquatic up into the terrestrial, making it look like it really was just born from the hillside. We've even got wildlife that lives here. We've got a frog over here hanging out on the water's edge. There are frogs everywhere. They've got visitors like birds and butterflies, dragonflies. You're inviting nature into your backyard when you create a water feature. Just like the last pondless we showed you, 
This starts off with our well or pooling area. We don't want to ruin this with pipes sticking out. That fits the bill great. And this guy, he likes the moss because it's nice and, oh, there he goes, nice and moist. And then he's got somewhere to escape to in all these pooling areas. I'm going to touch on sound again because we are in a small backyard. This is a small corridor and it traps a lot of sound. If we had big crashing waterfalls that were falling onto other rocks, it would probably become overpowering. Falling into these pools mutes it down a little bit, gives us that nice tranquil sound. This is something you can have a conversation over. And also when you open the windows, it's not gonna overpower this sunroom. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tour of these pondless waterfalls. Share this with your friends. We'd love to have you back. We're here building beautiful water features and showing you how we do it every single week at Atlantis Water Gardens. We'll see you on the next one.